61 mile per hour bug is really just about being all ate up with motor. It's about old fashioned combustion in 16 furnaces amidships that are blown into a furious conflagration by quad turbo fans. Push that engine button and the 8.0 liter W16 lights, not with the ear bending bark of an Italian supercar. Bugatti figures it is above those kinds of bad boy theatrics, but with the manly burble of a lazy 650 revolution per minute idle. To paraphrase Theodore Roosevelt, speak softly and carry a suitcase nuke. To be brutally cynical, for that's the last refuge of plebeians who cannot now and never will be able to afford a Chiron, this car is a do-over. It's a reboot of a last decade idea for reviving a slumbering auto boutique with a moonshot engineering project intended to create shock and awe. The 1001 horsepower Veyron 16.4 was the busted sound barrier, the Everest summit, the 4 minute mile. It was the car that went 1 mile per hour faster than a Peugeot P88, the fastest race car on the Mulsanne straight, just because. The benchmarks have all been bested, the hyperbole all belabored. It seems pointless to raise the bar again with another mid-engined two-seat coupe, like enrolling Superman in a CrossFit class in the hopes of widening the gap over those speeding bullets. Viewed more charitably, the concept was perhaps not fully tapped. The Veyron may have improved greatly during its 10-year, 450-car slow drip of a production run, but its handling never rose above that of a blindingly fast Lexus. Unlike Lexus, it was loud inside, and not a good kind of loud but a loud born of thrumming tires and ticking injectors and whirring accessories and those great sucking bazookas behind your head. And its slightly corpulent styling was perhaps a shade too Milan Rouge for some and not enough Yves Montan with a cocked cigarette and a piercing squint. It was an awesome thing, the Veyron, but not above a sequel. Shock and awe is highly perishable, and engineers always need new challenges. Over some squid nibbles and other Portuguese delicacies at a Lisbon bistro near the Tagus River, I am assured that the Chiron was indeed a worthy challenge. At first, explained chassis development head Jacan Schwal, the thinking was just to restyle the Veyron and crank up the boost. But everybody soon realized that going from 1200 horsepower in the hottest Veyrons, the Super Sport and the Grand Sport Vitesse, to a still drivable 1500 in the Chiron required more than just a bigger blow. Eventually, nearly every single part number changed in the engine, and in the 7-speed transmission, and in the two clutches, and the wheels, tires, brakes, and self-adjusting suspension, and the body, aerodynamic devices, and interior. Even the hand-painted, solid silver Bugatti grille badge got a facelift. 